as always, uh, this is also this episode is also available as a as a playcast. You can go down in the description below, click the link, which will take you through to the playlist. Uh, it's a Spotify link, which is a blend of of the commentary, also with the original records, kind of like a radio show. Let me know what you think. Back on with the show. This is part two of our Glastonbury special. In yesterday's episode, we looked at some of the amazing kind of old bands that were playing due to play Glastonbury this year. Today, I've curated a playlist of exceptional female artists. The discussion of women playing music festivals, especially in like higher positions, has been a very prominent conversation over the past couple of years. About four years ago, uh, a journalist for the NME published a uh, published an article which discussed the, like the lineup of Reading artists that contained women, and it was like this many people. So Glastonbury this year has vowed to make them 50%. Now, I think the kind of caveat to that is that, so you have like, male artists, female artists, and then you have artists that are a mix of gen- genders. So in that in that category, you have people like Metronomy, for example, right? Like they're a lot of blokes, and, and they've got a female member. Uh, Wolf Alice, for example, have a female lead singer, but the rest of them are blokes. But then you have act- artists like Biba Doobie, and you have people like uh, Taylor Swift and Diana Ross, who are all solo artists. Amazing, amazing solo artists. And then you have people like The Big Moon, who are all girls. And I kind of just thought that it would be a really good idea just to celebrate any act that contains women. Because there are some brilliant acts playing this this festival, and I just think that this would be really a really good opportunity to celebrate that. I personally believe that we should have way more women playing music festivals. I, I would like to get to a place where we're just focusing on uh, talent rather than having to focus on gender. But when, when one gender is being represented so... So little, I think we need to celebrate the female artists to kind of give them a bit of a bigger profile. So, in this episode, we have 15 artists that are playing Glastonbury, that were due to play Glastonbury this weekend. And we're starting off with Taylor Swift. I've seen Taylor Swift before. She's iconic, isn't she? Now, Taylor Swift, for me, as an artist, started off in this real pop country world. Um, like in the late 20, like, like late noughties. It was never anyone that I ever paid attention to. It wasn't until like 2012 that she started making pop music and selling records and winning Grammys. To me, she was just always that the woman that Kanye interrupted at the MTV Awards. But eventually what happened was she started putting out pop records and they were good. Like they were, they were good pop records. Now, I there's a lot that I don't like about pop music, like really commercial pop music. But Taylor Swift does a lot of her own writing and I think you kind of have to respect that a lot. In October 2014, she released the album 1989, which obviously is like worldwide, 10 million copies, nine times platinum in America, nine times platinum in Australia, four times platinum in the UK just mental like she's a huge 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 star and there are some amazing records that she's put out she's collaborated with some great artists that record also then went on to be covered as an entire album by Ryan Adams who took it and turned it into this really really cool rock and roll album and just showed that actually the songs that she had created and and made really kind of glossy and commercial could be roughed up and they were really good so it kind of uh, props to Taylor Swift where where it's due. Like she changed my opinion on pop music, and I think she did for a lot of people. I managed to catch her actually in 2018, in like October, November time, 2018. I went and saw her play uh, in Brisbane at the Gabba. Was it the Gabba? Yeah, the Gabba, which is like a cricket stadium. Uh, and she was great. Like I've seen a few of these massive pop artists before. I saw Beyonce a few years ago, and it's like a proper show. It's a bit self-indulgent, but you know why wouldn't you have it a bit self-indulgent? You're a pop star. <laughs> so I think that my my only criticism of her playing Glastonbury was that I think it should have happened five years ago. I can't believe that it's taken this long to get her to headline. However, the rest of this lineup is without a doubt insane. Continuing with the legend that is Diana Ross. Diana Ross, born in 1944, she is 76 years old, uh, born and raised in Detroit, Michigan, was the lead singer of the group The Supremes, who obviously 
iconic with the Motown kind of sound. In 1993, Guinness Book of World Records declared her the most successful female music artist in history. Wow, that's mental. The record that I'm gonna play today, and, and there are so many iconic records put out by her. I mean, let's just look at her discography and go to her. 24 studio albums, five live albums, and 30 compilation albums. Wow. 91 singles, goodness gracious me. In the UK, she, her first number one was in 1971 with I'm Still Waiting. In America, obviously had massive success. 1970, Ain't No Mountain High Enough. Um, Touch Me in the Morning in 1963. The theme from Mahogany in 1975. Love Hangover in 1976. You know, incredible, incredible records. Obviously, the gay anthem of the century, I'm Coming Out. What an amazing, amazing artist. We could just talk about Diana Ross for ages. I'm really I'm a bit gutted that we're not doing a WTF episode about her, actually, because it would be really cool to just go through her, all of her records. But there's one record that I want to play, and it actually is taken from the album Diana, produced by none other than the legend that is Niall Rogers of Chic. Uh, just a real part of that, that time. And I think it's just... Disco goodness. I uh, just would love to see to have seen this live. She's iconic and this record is brilliant. This is the wonderful Upside Down. Upside down. Boy, you turn me inside out. Bringing it a bit more current, I want to talk about an artist that I think is just phenomenal. She's like phenomenal. We're talking about Sampa the Great. Sampa Tembo, better known as Sampa the Great, is a Zambian songwriter raised in Botswana, but she's currently based in Australia. She moved to Australia, which I'm really jealous of. She's signed to Ninja Tune Records, which is one of the UK's most important UK uh, independent record labels. Other artists signed to Ninja Tune include Roots Manoeuvre, Bonobo, Alan Tobin. Cinematic Orchestra, Roses Gabor, Peggy Goo. Previous people include people like The Chemists and Toddler T. Khalees was signed to Ninja Tune, interesting, didn't know that. Just a, a, an amazing, amazing record company. She really makes music that, that kind of defies genre. I guess you'd, you'd probably say she's a rapper or a poet or a spoken word artist, but it's not like she's any one of those. She kind of is breaking out of all of those genres. I first came across her in 2017, was it? 2016 with the record Blue Boss, which was like nothing I'd heard before. The production was ridiculous. Her flow is like nothing else I've ever seen. She's just incredible, just a really, really incredible artist. And then last year followed up with the ridiculous final form, which just feels like a bit of an iconic, iconic record. I'm just really, 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 really interested in her career going forward. She's just put out her first studio album last year, The Return, which I'll be honest with you, I haven't checked out yet, but I, I feel like I definitely will now. She put out a couple of mixtapes and stuff previously and some EPs, but that one there, The Return, which includes the record final form, which we're gonna play today. Absolutely incredible artist, really interested to see where she takes this going forward. Really, really great as a rapper as well. This is Final Form by Sample the Great. Wait, say I'm in, in all states I'm in. I might find a form in my melanin. Wait. We just mentioned Khalees also being uh, signed to Ninja Tune Records in the previous part. Khalees is an artist that I have. She's, I feel like she's just been around since like forever. I probably first heard her on ODB's record, Got Your Money. She's the, uh, she's the folk featuring artist on that record, which is just brilliant, old school. Old school brilliance. Um, which went silver in 1999. She then went on to release her own uh, her debut album, Kaleidoscope, which was produced by the Neptunes, that's Pharrell Williams. Continued to put out like big records. It wasn't until 2003 though, that she released the incredible Milkshake, which again, I believe is a Neptunes record. Is it? It's definitely Pharrell, because it's got his signature at the start of it. Produced by the Neptunes. And it's an iconic, 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 like early noughties record love that record before releasing the record then following that up with the record trick me which is also so of its time bossy came out in 2006 acapella in 2010 she's had some incredible records in the past bounce in 2011 with calvin harris like just that was a massive record famously as well she married uh, nas incredible new york rapper kind of Jay-Z's arch nemesis for a time, um, and just a, an iconic, iconic rapper. But if we're gonna talk about her music, there's only one uh, one record that we can pick, and it's her collaboration with the phenomenal Andre 3000 on the record Millionaire. Maybe one of 
my favourite records ever made, actually. Uh, it's not even actually about it, it's one of the best records ever made. I'm gonna let this one speak for itself. This is Millionaire featuring Andre 3000 by Khalees. Papa, I'm a millionaire. Elizabeth Wood Woodridge Grant, better known as Lana Del Rey, is a pop culture singer-songwriter. Has this kind of aesthetic of a bit of a Nancy Sinatra, 1950s, 1960s America kind of singer-songwriter. A lot of people class her music as incredibly dreary. I think her music is wonderfully cinematic. I first heard, uh, I actually first heard a remix of Video Games, her kind of debut record. That was the first thing I ever heard of her, which came out, which came out in 2011. Went to number 91 in the US charts. Number one in Germany, bloody hell, there we go. Number nine in the UK. Worldwide, video games sold 2.6 million copies, so it's obviously an absolute monster. Followed that up with The Wonderful Born to Die, which is gold in Australia, gold in the UK. <laughs> Blue Jeans, Summertime Sadness, obviously got the remix treatment from Cedric Gervais, which was a mother of a record. In 2012, sold 1.3 million units in the UK. Just for that, like the, the records are amazing. National Anthem, Blue Velvet, Last year put out the record Norman fucking Rockwell, which was named like, I think it was Q or Enemies record of the decade, like amazing. As part of that released a wonderful cover of Doing Time by Sublime, which is just brilliant. Her voice with that makes it sound so California. It's just such a wonderful, wonderful record and a brilliant, brilliant cover. But my favorite record by her is very different for her and her sound, I think. And we're talking about 2014's West Coast, a record that in the UK sold 205,000 copies. US only sold 200, 118, so she's actually bigger in the UK. That's amazing. BPI Silver, which means it went silver in the UK, taken from the album Ultraviolence. I love this record. Camo and Crooked did a remix of it as well, which was brilliant, but the production on this felt very different for her. The sound felt a little bit different. Still kind of dark and twisted in that way that she does really, really well, but just my favorite record by her. So I'm gonna, uh, this one is gonna speak for itself. This is West Coast by Lana Del Rey. Down on the West Coast, they got a saying. If you're not drinking, then you're not playing. Talking about left of the field female pop artists, someone else that I really, really love is Banks. Um, I first heard Banks like a million years ago when she put out a record which was first played on Zane Lowe's show at like towards the end and I just thought it was really cool. Gillian Rose Banks, known mononymously as Banks. She would go on to release records like Warm Water which are incredible, Begging for Thread, Drowning, Fuck With Myself. Last year put out the wonderful Gimme which was one of my favourite records of the year. I think she's absolutely brilliant. Um, she's released three albums to date, Goddess, The Altar and Three. And yeah, just kind of is a singer. It's a little bit self-indulgent I guess so it's like my whole thing about singer songwriters that I don't really like but she's kind of left in the field and a bit creative so I really like her and always have. But which record do you pick by her? Because the good thing about doing this show is that I can play older stuff. I don't have to play her most current stuff. I was gonna use the Snake Hips remix of Warm Water, which is a wonderful change of kind of sound for her. Um, the original is incredible and, and light and, 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 and just really beautiful. Snake Hips kind of jazzed it up a bit and gave it a bit of bounce. But I think that I could do that, or I could play the first record I heard by her, which is this wonderful dark pop record. And as soon as I heard it, I just remembered how fucking good it is of a record. This is Before I Ever Met You by Banks. Before I ever met you, I never knew I could be broken in so many ways. For those of you that haven't been following this channel, last year I did something called WTF, where I covered every single artist playing Reading and Leeds. I made a little like four minute video about every single artist. An artist, and, and, and a few times like I got it wrong. I, I said one thing and I got it wrong. And one of the big ones was Claro. In my defense, she hadn't released her debut album at this at the point I did the video. Like I've done a whole WTF episode about her and her back catalog, which is fact, like you can go and check that, that's fine, I'm happy with with like the facts of it, but my opinion of her was incorrect. I said that she was just another singer-songwriter and wasn't that interesting, and I was wrong because that was before I heard the record bags. Holy moly, that is one of my favorite records of last year. Taking 
uh, like it's just brilliant. I love the difference of like guitar and piano and the blend of the two. The production on it is just wonderful. It's a heartbreaking love record. It has just earned her space on this playlist because she's absolutely brilliant. Bags, uh, there's nothing more really that I can say about it. It's just a fucking monster of a record. This is Bags by Claro. I guess this could be worse walking out the door with your bags. Sorry, I've had to like move downstairs because I like. I'm up here. I'm up here usually. Like, right, that's my studio. Today is exceptionally hot. It's like really warm. So I am going to. Um... So I'm going to just move down here where it's not too ridiculous. There is no way that we can, can't talk about incredible female artists and miss out the hero that is Robin. I think when we talk about modern day pop music, when we talk about modern day singers, when we talk about modern day songwriters, you don't get there without Robin. She's, pro in my opinion, the most important influence on female musicians in the last 20 years. Like, you, we can go through and name some iconic artists. Um, but like, you know, look at like Diana Ross or Madonna or you know, Taylor Swift. Like, there are some really important people. And I think, um, in more recent years, you would add people like Lord and Billie Eilish to that. But Robin changed everything. She changed everything. When she released Heartbeats, it changed pop music. And that, it didn't just change pop music for women, like it changed pop music for men, it cha changed pop music for bands, it changed everything. Robin is one of the most important artists ever. And she's had some incredible records obviously we've just mentioned heartbeats I think call your girlfriend is also exceptionally brilliant where's she from oh she's from Stockholm in Sweden to date she's released eight studio albums since 1995 that's mental last in 2018 released the record honey which went to number one in Sweden but there's one record for me that stands out head above the rest and that is the incredible dancing on my own a record which has been covered to death by so many different artists over the years, but no one does it like her. She's changed pop music, she's absolutely brilliant. God, I would love to have seen Robin. So to celebrate, this is Dancing On My Own by Robin. Kind of following on from Robin and her latest album, which was produced by the lead singer Metronomy, we did an episode about Metronomy uh, kind of in, in late March. We talked about their, the importance of them as a band. We talked about their back catalogue. Metronomy are, are an incredible band. If, 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 if you want to know more about them, then you can go back and watch the WTF episode out where I talk about them and their music. But just such an underrated act, I think, personally. The record that I've chosen here, like I could have put in The Look or I could have put in uh, The Bay or there's so many amazing records by Metronomy. They collaborated with Robin on the wonderful Hang Me Out To Dry and it just felt the right record to be putting in this um, following on from Robin and going into the next artist. So I'll let this record speak for itself. If you want to know more about Metronomy, go and check out the WTF episode I've done about them. Uh, but this is Hang Me Out To Dry featuring Robin by Metronomy. We can't do this episode and not mention probably my favourite all-girl group in history, and that's Haim. Like, we've spoken about Haim at length on this channel. Uh, last year, just before Reading, I was almost certain they were gonna be the secret act, because they just released Summer Girl. I think that I'll be doing a video about uh, future Reading and Leeds headliners, and for me, I'm ready for their headline slot now. I'm ready for the Heim headline slot. They're formidable. My most antis anticipated album of the year will be will be Women in Music Part 3 when it comes out. Is it next week, week after? This week? When is it? It's this week. It's Friday. I can't. I actually cannot wait for that record to come out. They are phenomenal. Now, I've played a couple of the records on the show already. I thought this is a good excuse to go backwards. Um, I would, I'd love more than anything to do a WTF episode about them and their music. I think they're absolutely brilliant. But what record do you pick? Like, there's so, so many. Let's just go through which, which home records I would, uh, you could choose from. So they kicked off with the record Forever and then Don't Save Me. 
uh, which all did very well in the UK. Um, you've got records like The Wire, If I Could Change Your Mind, My Songs 5, which features ASAP Ferg, Want You Back, Little Of Your Love, Nothing's Wrong, Summer Girl, obviously is amazing, Now I'm In's brilliant, Hallelujah is beautiful, The Steps is one of my favourite records of the year, Don't Wanna is absolutely stunning. We could just go through track for track, oh, they're just fucking amazing. They're just absolutely brilliant. And so I don't know where you, where you stop with them. Which one do you pick? Let's roll out anything new because we, we can have we can have that this week. Um, and I'll probably be playing it loads towards the end of the year because I'm sure it's going to be an album that I'm obsessed with. Oh God, they're so good. I actually, I remember seeing them in 2013. They played the Radio 1 stage and I remember not really enjoying their show. And then I went and saw Kings of Leon at Milton Keynes Bowl and they supported and Laura and I went and they redeemed themselves in a big way. They were incredible. The biggest, one of the biggest Reading regrets I ever have, I have one every year. Like I miss a, a set every single year. But one of the biggest was that I missed Heim, Heim Headline in 2016 or whatever it was on the Radio 1 stage. They are absolutely brilliant and I'm ready for them to go on to be that next big band. Three albums deep, every single song they release is just so good. The modern day Fleetwood Mac, in my opinion, and some. And so just celebrate them. I want to play Falling because it's a belter. Enjoy. Following up from, from Heim, obviously amazing. Uh, a new artist, which I'm gagging for a debut album from, is the incredible Bibi Doobie. We did a WTF episode about Bibi Doobie when we could do them because she would use play Reading and Leeds. Signed to Dirty Hit, endorsed heavily by Matt Healy of the 1975. She is absolutely brilliant. Her records are really, really great. I highly recommend going back and watching that video if you have not seen it yet. The record that we're gonna to play today is the formidable She Plays Bass. God, I can't wait for more music by her and I'm gagging to see her live. If you enjoy this, go and check out the video I did about her because it goes into detail about her as an artist and it's, she's really cool. But for now, this is the wonderful She Plays Bass by Biba Doobie. She plays bass, she plays bass. Another artist that I've recently discovered or has recently kind of cropped up in my field is the brilliant Phoebe Bridges who just put out her second album, I think it is. I'm not a big fan of singer-songwriters. I spoke about this last week. I really, I'm just not a big fan. But I heard this record that we're gonna play today a while back and fell in love with it. Everything else I've heard from any of the other singles that she's put out she have been great. She recently collaborated with the 1975, which on a record that I didn't love that much, but I think she's got a really cool voice. She's kind of a bit emo and I like it. The production on some of her most recent records are really, really cool. Uh, I think it's the record I See You, is that right? The record I Know The End has this really kind of bombastic sound to it, which I really love. Uh, and I really, I've not, I've not checked out the full album yet, but I'm excited too. She's absolutely great. Today we're playing my favorite record by her, and that's the wonderful Kyoto. <laughs> The conversation about female bands, is, I just don't understand it. Because on one side, what you're saying is, you're, you're having people say there needs to be a 50-50 split, and I'm, I'm, my argument is absolutely there should be equal, but there needs to be more women making great music. That's where we should be at. But then there's a counter argument, which is completely fine as well, which is there are lots of women playing, making great music, None of them are getting booked. The Big Mina are a classic example of that. There are so many incredible bands, like heavy and great singer-songwriters and like uh, female DJs and rappers that are just not getting booked. I would be fine with the argument, well, we need to have more women making good music if that was true. But we, I've just played a whole list of women that are absolutely amazing. I have, there are very few of those that have ever played Reading and Leeds. And the big moon for me are a band that if they continue to make music like they're making now, will go on a headline, like they're so good. I love this record. They're absolutely brilliant. Their, al their second album came out earlier this year. I think it's their second album. Yeah, it came out in January 2020, uh, Walking Like We Do. They've previously supported artists like the Maccabees, Ezra Furman, the Vaccines. They're a London four piece. Um, I think they're absolutely brilliant. Oh, the first album, The Road, was uh, shortlisted for the Mercury Music Prize in 2017. I didn't know that. Cool, and they supported the Pixies on their, 19, on their 2019 tour. 
even cooler. They're just a band that I think are really, really doing well. And I think that we should be celebrating more artists that are doing this. And I'm bored of the conversation that we need to have women making better music. I think it's time that we just started signing them to do big festivals. I think I'm ready for that. And this record here, I think, is one that just shows that they are up there with the indie staples that are required for, for, festival, um, for festival anthems. Uh, this is the incredible The Light. Skunk and Anty are an English rock band that, that formed in 1994 and have gone on to just be a really important part of like British music. Like they've swept under the radar in a lot of ways. Uh, I don't think like they had a very big global career, but in terms of the UK, were very very important. And especially at Glastonbury, have gone on to just be mega mega acts. They headlined the Pyramid Stage on the Sunday in 1999. They were the final headline of the millennium. That's a cool, that is a cool fact right there. Um, they toured globally with bands like U2, Aerosmith, Feeder, Lenny Kravitz, Bad Religion, Rammstein, Muse, like there, they had a massive run in the 90s. They were absolutely huge, led by the incredible Skin, just so iconic and their, their sound was very 90s, like they very have a very, very 90s sound in that way that we were talking about in the download feature last week, a couple of weeks ago. Just super, super, super important. British music, they just, they're so, they're so classic and to see them play Glastonbury was a really exciting thing for me. I was really excited to go delve deeper into their, them as an act. So hopefully they're booked for next year so we can cover them more. Today we're playing probably like their most famous record I think, in my opinion. Uh, we're playing The Incredible Week, taken from, taken from their debut album Paranoid and Sunburnt in 1996 which only charted at number 14. I didn't believe, can't believe that. That shocked me that. I heard other records that have done a lot better, like Hedonism and Brazen. Um, but Weak for me is the record that reminds me of being a kid. My dad was a big fan of Skunk and Nancy. And what a front woman sk skin is. Brilliant, we love that. So, enjoy. This is Weak by Skunk and Nancy. Weak as I am, no tears for you. Weak as I am. And I'm gonna finish this show off with the one of the most amazing voices in popular music in the last 20 years and that's the formidable Brittany Howard you may know Brittany Howard as the lead singer of Alabama Shakes incredible guitarist voice like nothing else just absolutely incredible I've seen Alabama Shakes someone play uh, best of all in, I think 2013 really cool kind of Nashville blues uh, I spoke about her recently because she is in a band with Becca Mankari who we put on played on a show, on a show recently incredible artist um, and last year went into the side project and released this record which is the most heartwarming beautiful record I just honestly it's one of my favorite records of last year she's absolutely incredible uh, the, mu the music video has um, features Terry Crews as well which is just one of the coolest things I ever. I've just been reading through the the genius lyrics for stay high uh, the record itself is uh, dedicated to her dad uh, verified by her Brittany Howard's dedication to her dad K KJ Howard uh, KJ Howard she narrates through the song how her father was special to the family um, just a record that uh, I just think so Absolutely beautiful, like I do. It's just stunning. It's the perfect way to finish this this segment of incredible female artists that were due to play Glastonbury this week, um, and a nice way to celebrate them, I think. Anyway, um, I hope you enjoyed this. I do. Like it was a bit a bit of a bit of a different segment um, just to talk about the the female acts. I think that's important, though. You know, the conversation around females being booked for, for festivals is still there, there because it's still not equal. And it's a bit ridiculous because there are some amazing acts that are available to play. Just book them. I hope you have enjoyed this show. If there is any, uh, if you think I've missed anyone or picked an incorrect song, let me know. Uh, I'd love to know your thoughts in the comment section below. Tomorrow, we're looking at all of the kind of everything else, the newer stuff, the hip hop, grime, some of the punk. Uh, there's some great stuff, some really weird, wacky stuff that's out there and I'm excited to share it with you. But for now, I'm gonna leave you with Stay High by Brittany Howard. <laughs>